Pangea. This new exhibition at the Saatchi brings together contemporary artists from Africa and Latin America. These vastly different regions are united here by their experiences of colonial trauma and a search for an empowered identity. It starts off with an infestation. These giant ants have been created by Rafael Gomez Barros from Colombia. They capture the Latin American tradition of magic realism, the intrusion of the fantastical into the everyday. And as you come in, you're drawn towards this corner of the room here, towards this mass of ants aggressively crawling over each other to get at something. We don't know what. Is it honey? Is it something decaying? If you look closer, you'll see that each ant is made up of the cast of two human skulls. These ants represent the thousands of people that have been displaced as a result of Colombia's violent history. Rafael is giving them a haunting visibility here. It leaves you with a feeling of unease, and the next room doesn't provide much of an antidote. This room is full of unrelenting paintings by Abudia from Ivory Coast. Each canvas is inhabited by monstrous characters that scream at you for attention. This is a record of the 2011 civil war in Abidjan. The first thing that strikes me is the crudeness, the cartoonishness of the figures. Abudia is inspired by street art made by children in his area, and you do feel that this has the quality of a child's nightmare. Just look at the manically grinning soldiers, the horrified parents. Abudia describes himself as a journalist recording everything around him. He's a visionary too, even if his visions often feel apocalyptic. A different mood is struck by Oscar Murillo in this room. He grew up in Colombia and his family emigrated to London when he was 10. That's important to know because his works feel like memories gathering dust and grime. They feel like they belong in the recesses of his mind rather than a white gallery space. The repetitive image of an old deflated football is like a recurring childhood dream. His struggles with his own displaced identity is articulated by random words. Chorizo and tomate are scrawled over this black abyss of a canvas. Words that evoke the delicious intimacy of home cooking, here given almost shamanic, iconic status. I want to end here, in this space created by Ibrahim Mahama, because it's the most transportive. I'm surrounded by hundreds of coal sacks all stitched together. Ibrahim is interested in the life stories of these sacks, which are first imported by the Ghana Cocoa Board, then used by charcoal sellers and found around local markets. They're vessels of commodities, which is all quite harmless, so why do I feel like I'm imprisoned? It's a very oppressive space. I feel like I'm breathing in the fibres of the jute sacks. I think Ibrahim is ensnaring us into this space. He's inviting us to become packaged commodities, drawing attention to human trafficking in Ghana. The worn, battered textures of these sacks make me feel like I'm inside the carcass of a dead animal. There's a darkness running through so many of the works in this show. The most potent are driven by displacement and political unrest. Nostalgia and a hunger for belonging weigh heavy on the walls. The Atlantic Ocean may divide Africa and Latin America, but the fragments of memory on display create a powerful solidarity between these regions.